So I'm going to put forward that saphenous ligation really is an obsolete procedure for varicose vein disease. So I'd like to discuss what is disruptive technology and Clayton Christensen coined this term uh, in 1995 and it's one that creates a new market and value network and eventually disrupts an existing market and value network and in doing so displaces established market leaders and alliances. So endovenous procedures are more effective, they're safer, they're far more acceptable, they're lower cost and they're now world standard. So as I've discussed earlier today, we can do ankle to junction treatment and we can do injection sclerotherapy for tributary incompetence you'd otherwise never see with stripping. Dr. Bradbury presented in a paper in 2004 that if you neglect the baloney great saphenous vein it's an and it's incompetent, you actually get an unacceptable rate of recurrence and you never correct the venous hemodynamics. So a number of studies here, and again, most studies in the literature have looked at old lasers and bare tip fibres, so keeping in mind that the new lasers and new fibres have better results. But again, first study, nearly three years, three years of results, 100% success rate with laser. And all of these consistently show long-term data has a high success rate with laser. The bottom one from Caradice shows the initial technical success rate, despite it being an old laser of 8, 10 nanometres, still very high, nearly 100% success rate. Clinical recurrence rate significantly higher at one year with surgery, 20%. Again, old laser, bare tip fibre. Small saphenous vein in particular. At best, if you strip the small saphenous vein, it averages 10 centimetres of length removal. So again, treating from the ankle for the small saphenous, much more likely to eradicate axial reflux. Procedural complications, minimal with laser. Nerve injury, 39% if you strip the below knee great saphenous <coughs> vein. Sensory disturbance, again in particular, very high with, with stripping and uh, surgery of the saphenopalpatial junction. Wound infection, rare with laser. Paresthesia, as you saw in my talk this morning, rare with laser, very high with surgery. So again, the radial fibre has made things a lot more safe. This is looking at a 1470 laser, one with a bare tip fibre, one with a radial, so with a bare tip, one with a radial, and you can see the incidence of bruising and pain is really approaches zero with the radial fibre. Far less deep venous thrombosis, we've had one calf thrombosis in over 1300 procedures. This study uh, by Andre Van Rye looked at, it was a nice prospective study, 5% incidence of DVT with surgery. So it's far broader applicability, these endovenous procedures. This gentleman's 47 years of age. He had a deep venous thrombosis in his early 20s after a soccer injury. He had tears when he presented to me uh, with his healed leg. Uh, five months after I'd done endovenous laser and sclerotherapy, telling me it was the first time he'd been in the pool or swum in the ocean with his children without a wound in his leg in 20 years. So it's great for the bari bariatric, the elderly, the eldest I've treated is 92, the sick, uh, those with recurrent disease, it's far safer, far lower risk of thrombosis, especially in your thrombophilic patient and the athlete who wants to get back to activities quickly. So it's far lower economic cost to the individual uh, and for the government as far as tax paying is concerned. You can see there that despite using old lasers, the sick leave days are far less with laser. And my patients take on average the day of surgery off and they go back to work the next day. So far more cost effective. This is a probability study looking at outcomes over five years. They use the old laser, so again only an 83% success rate. However, laser was far more likely to be cost effective over five years instead of surgery. So if you are using a laser system with a near 100% success rate, laser's the clear winner. This was a study uh, done by Alan Davies and his group and highlighted in yellow, uh, day procedure laser or done in the outpatient clinic, just over a thousand pounds cost for five years. Inpatient at the bottom with surgery is almost double that cost. Day case surgery, more expensive also at 1,200 pounds. Now keeping in mind that 10 to 20% of patients having stripping are not suitable for day surgery and get admitted overnight. Now endovenous procedures are now first line treatment in three international guidelines. Surgery is relegated to third line treatment. So in summary, endovenous procedures are more effective, they're far safer, they're far more applicable and acceptable, they're cheaper and they're world standard. So this is in the Harvard Business Review. Powerful institutional forces fight simpler alternatives to expensive care because those alternatives threaten their livelihoods. Individual leaders become incapable of embracing disruptive technology 
because the profitability of the institutions they lead has been eroded. Typically, not only do they ignore potential disruptions, but they actively work to discredit and oppose them. Disruptive business models must be married with disruptive innovations in insurance and reimbursement in order to reap the full impact of cost and accessibility. Disruption in healthcare entails moving the simplest procedures now performed in expensive hospitals to outpatient clinics, retail clinics and patients' homes. However, this needs to be done without just cost shifting the cost to the patient. Thank you.